moving on to our next speaker. Those who are gathered here on the dais and off the dais, I'm immensely happy to be a part of PACE 2016. So my topic is casting the light on common electrolytes, all right? So coming to that, do you see this? Who are these people here? What do you see yourself? You see yourself? Yes or no? Yes or no? A louder one, please. I need some interaction, otherwise I will not go to the next slide. See, it, it, the same feeling is here also. As an emergency physician, surgery department comes and you know, stabs us, the gynec comes and stabs us, and even medicine worst. And you see, one pistol on one hand to shoot ourselves and the other one to shoot the other fellow who's coming and intervening with us. So emergency is like that, okay? It is an open door for all the people to come, all the doctors to come and have a visit with us and fight with us and are not updated to the recent trends. But in, in as of India, emergency physician and conferences are more than that of the surgery and the internal medicine. So we are happy and proud. So going into the topic, so electrolytes are elements and minerals found in the body that are electrically charged particles, especially cations and anions, and are responsible for many activities of the body, okay, like you know, movement of water and fluids and the chemical reactions, allow, allow and generate energy and maintain cell wall stability. So hormones produced by the kidneys and adrenals, glands control most of the electrolyte as our kidney specialist is also here. So we have 65% of the intracellular fluid, 8% of plasma, and interstitial fluid of 25% and transcellular fluid of 2%. All these constitute our total body weight, all right? So the reason for the electrolyte imbalance are three main reasons, kidney dysfunction, lack of water, we guys don't drink water a lot, and medication side effects like, you know, the OHAs. So the normal, the normal amount required for an individual of 70 kg adult is about 80 to 120 milli equivalents per day chloride of 80 to 120 again, potassium of 50 to 100 milli equivalents per day, calcium 1 to 3, which is available in the milk, and magnesium of 20 milli equivalents per day. All these are, are a part of our own diet, right? So the mechanism of fluid and electrolyte movement is like osmosis, diffusion, and filtration. I start from the biochemistry and end up with the medicine, all right? Medicine is with the treatment. So. Like, you know, osmosis is through a semi-permeable membrane from a higher concentration to a lower concentration and diffusion from the breakdown, from, again from a higher to a lower, it breaks down into the lower concentration and filtrage, filtration is exchange of molecules within the cell, all right? So intracellular uh, constitutes about uh, potassium, magnesium and phosphorus, extracellular, sodium, chloride and bicarb. Then the functions of sodium include, you know, the, they maintain extracellular fluid thereby controls the movement of water between the fluid compartments, transmission of nerve impulses and neuromuscular and myocardial impulse transmission. So they, they get source from the salt, allosterone and, you know, and it is regulated mainly by the allosterone and the urine output. So the normal serum sodium in the blood is about 135 to 145 milli equivalents per liter. So next coming into the potassium, it is one of, it is a main cation and the major, major functions are neuromuscular uh, no, excitability and muscle contraction. Usually if it is low, low, low potassium, you will have, have fatigueness and all. So needed for glycogen formation and protein synthesis, correction of acid base imbalances, potassium ion needs to be exchanged with the hydrogen ions. So normal range of the potassium was about 3.5 to 5 and calcium is most abundantly seen in our body and it is regulated by the thyroid and the parathyroid glands. So, and uh, parathyroid hormone controls the balance among the bone calcium and into you know, gastrointestinal absorption. Thyrocalcitocin from thyroid gland inhibits the release of calcium from the bones, okay? Otherwise the bones will be depleted. So functions mainly maintain cell membrane and its integrity, conduction of nerve impulses, stimulation and depolarization and contraction of the cardiac muscles and acid as aids in blood coagulation, growth and formation of bones and muscle relaxation. So vitamin D is a major constituent and development main functions are, you know, development of bones and teeth, promotes the neuromuscular action, participates in carbohydrate metabolism assists in acid-base regulation, maintains the level of adenosine triphosphate. 
So water balance, water balance is a major constitution as the body is full with water. So without water, we cannot go ahead with this electrolyte. So just putting some brief on that. So total body water is about 60 percentage. Intracellular volume is 40, extracellular is 20, and interstitial is 15, and plasma volume is 5. So brain, blood, kidney, liver, bone, muscle needs water. So resulting in the loss of wa loss of water in the body or you you tend to take less amount of water you'll have acute weight loss decreased skin tiger because of dehydration mild and volume deficit should be considered into three mild moderate and severe severe is more than eight percentage of the body weight loss moderate is about five percentage and mild is about two percentage all right which is life threatening indeed because of hypotension and other other comorbidities so you'll have concentrated urine in case of low you know, water intake and you'll have postural hypotension when you sit down and get up you'll feel giddy and you'll have flattened neck veins you see your veins in the hands and in the neck you'll, you'll have a very flattened veins so you'll feel weak rapid and the heart rate will be high oliguria will be the increased temperature decreased central venous pressure cvp will be less so contributing factors no, they'll have edema, dyspnea neck veins, in case of volume overload, and increased weight, it's vice versa. Crackles in the lung, if, if the lung is filled with water, like pleural effusion or congestive cardiac failure, and they'll have tachycardia and increased blood pressure. So, you're all medical students, so, so what is studying? Student plus dying is studying, is it? Yes or no? Oh, all are saying yes. Somebody's clapping also. Okay, but this is how we feel. See, so many people come, talk, what needs to be taken, what need not be done. That is all we speaking about. So, we are coming to, we are coming to an undergraduate level and tell, trying to tell you what exactly you need to take home and practice. Alright? So, we need to sit and talk. Please don't move away. I know this is pre-lunch hour. Alright? So, now coming to the main part, that is sodium. So, hyponatremia we are going to take about. The normal range of sodium is 135 to 145. It, it is a major extracellular fluid. So you, you usually symptoms are like sweating, diuretics. Diuretics can cause, you know, and uh, vomiting and diarrhea. So clinical manifestation like orthostatic hypo hypotension, altered mental stasis, nausea, confusion, poor skin turgor, decreased saliva production, dry mucosa, and anorexia vomiting. Okay, be cautious in correcting, okay? You need about 0.5 milli equivalents per liter to increase every hour initially. Don't, you know, rapidly correct. Do not increase sodium more than 10 equivalents per liter in 24 hours or 18 milli equivalents per liter in 48 hours because rapid correction is also fatal because the, you will have edematous conditions. Treatment varies greatly with by etiology of hyponatremia and is important to look up online other sources if you are in doubt. And sodium concentration with selectrate, for example, a 5 percentage of sodium gives about 855 millimoles per liter. 3 percent sodium concentrates about 513 millimoles per liter. And 0.9 sodium, which is commonly available in NS, is about 154. Ringer lactate solution, 130 percent of millimole per liter is there. And dextrose, 5 percent dextrose is zero. Only just only the dextrose and doesn't contain sodium. Okay, hyponatremia. So causes loss of fluid, water deprivation, excessive salt intake, and conditions like diabetes, insipidus, and heat stroke. Okay. So the clinical manifestations include thirst, sticky mucous membranes, the flushed skin, postural hypotension, and dry and swollen tongue. The tongue looks like that. All right. So signs and symptoms. We often ask the patient to put out the tongue, and we we will not know what they are seeing in the tongue, isn't it? So that is what we see. And s signs and symptoms include water shifts inside the brain cells to the extracellular brain cells to decrease the total size of volume and the brain decreases in size. So you'll, you'll have altered mental status and all. So intra blood vessels can, can tear and bleed. Okay. So, and this will cause seizure and paralysis in the further. So always assess the volume status like mucous membrane, skin turgor, shrunken eyes, irritability, cardiac, tachycardia, and hypotension, as well as urine output and weight loss, which is CVP guided, which is done in the ICUs. And hyponatremia, the main correction treatment is, you know, you should always give the volume 
and rehydrate with NS if it is if it is no if he is dehydrated, then go into half NS, 0.45 NS. So a free give free water as D5, one half volume in the first 24 hours and the full volume in 48 hours. Don't rapidly correct, cause it will cause cerebral edema and seizures, as I told. So going into potassium, hypokalemia. So hypokalemia, you will have alkalosis, shallow respiration, irritability, confusion, weakness, lethargy, arrhythmias, thready pulse, and in le decreased intestinal motility. All right. So ECG, you can find, uh, you know, the T wave flattening and all. So that is one of way to see. And in an hyperkalemia, you see tall T P waves, T waves. Sorry. So you will, the clinical manifestation manifestations include muscle weakness, leg cramps, fatigue, lethargy, nausea and vomiting, anorexia, decreased bowel sounds, decreased bubble motility, and cardiac dysarthmias. And the reflexes are going to be depressed. So rapid correction includes give KCL IV, monitor heart with replacement of greater than 20 milli equivalents per hour. So always establish a central line and IV potassium can be painful and damaging to the vein. So always use a central line. Okay. So the severe use ma maximum of 40 milli equivalents IV in adults. In all cases, check stat potassium following each two to four hours. Don't replace it too much and cause hyperkalemia. Again, it is fatal. So slow correction can be, you know, give KCL orally, KSLate, an adult 20 to 40 milli equivalents two to three times per day. And in, uh, in a small child, one to two milli equivalents per kg per day in divided doses. So coming to hyperkalemia. So hyperkalemia will have muscle cramps, weakness, paralysis, drowsiness, decreased BP, EK, EKG changes. Definitely there will be ECG changes with the tall T waves and dysarthmias and abdominal cramping. So most of the time, the hyperkalemia is very fatal. It can cause cardiac arrhythmias and lead to VT and VF and other complications, even death. So causes decreased renal potassium excretion as seen in renal failure and oliguria, high potassium intake, renal insufficiency, shift of potassium out of cells as seen in acidosis. Clinical manifestations include, you know, easy changes like tall P T peak T waves and widened QRS complexes and even heart block. So rapid co correction needs to be done to protect the heart from potassium shifts. Calcium chloride can be given IV, you know, 500 mg, slow push with cardiac monitoring. Alkanize with 50 milli equivalents of sodium bicarb. So 50 ml of D50 with, you know, um, regular insulin of 8 to 10 units can be given over two hours. Which, which can be given that can reduce the potassium level in the blood. So clo slow, slow correction, you can give caselate and uh, 40 grams of caselate with 40 grams of sorbitol in 100 ml of water. Repeat doses QID as and when needed. Again, recheck the sodium, sorry, potassium level. So now going into the calcium, which, which, which is you know, the major part of the body, bones. And hypocalcemia, vitamin or calcium deficiency can cause. And uh, surgical hyperparathyroidism. By surgery, if they're trying to remove the thyroid gland, they accidentally remove the parathyroid gland also. So there's a loss of, uh, they, it can cause uh, hypokalemia. So pancreatitis minutes, and renal, renal failure. Tetany and cramps in muscles of extremities. All right. So these are torso signs. They'll have carpal spasms. And if you, you know, tap, finger tap on the right side or the left side of the, you know, uh, temporal region, there will be a twitching as seen here. So they'll have even uh, seizures and mental changes. So uh, renal, coming to the uh, acronym, renal reflex, reflexes are decreased. ECG changes will be seen. Nausea and vomiting, appearance flushed and lethargy. So clinical manifestation, again, like mild hypotension, flushed face with skin warmth heart block and cardiac arrest, muscle weakness and even paralysis. So main causes are renal failure, untreated diabetic ketoacidosis, excessive use of ant antacids and laxatives. So treatment of hypokalemia, 200 to 200 mg of elemental calcium, IV over 10 minutes in 50 to 100 ml of D5 followed by an infusion. 10% of calcium gluconate contains about 93 mg of elemental calcium. 
10 percentage of calcium chloride contains about 272 mg of elemental calcium. So always differentiate whether you're giving calcium gluconate or calcium chloride and check magnesium levels and if, if needed replace if low. So chronic, so use vitamin D along with oral calcium supplements. Nothing else needs to be done in the case of chronic. So coming to the last thing, hypercalcemia. So symptoms are, you know, they have stone, renal stones and uh, they'll have renal stones and, you know, neuropsychiatric symptoms like example confusion, well, as well as polyuria, polydipsia, fatigue, anorexia, nausea and vomiting. Signs are like, you know, hypertension, hyporeflexia, mental status and they'll have shortened hands and limbs and they'll have shortening of QT interval on in the ECG. So treatment, usually emergency treatment, if patient is symptomatic, just give calcium. Okay, if less than 13 milli equivalents. Use saline diuretics, give furosemide Lasix to, in order to wash out. And U volume or hypervolumia must be maintained. Hypervolumia results in calcium reabsorption. All right, so that's all today.